is this the final nail in the coffin for the forex market? ESMA announced that they're going to be cutting the leverage allowed on forex trading. Is this a good thing or is it a bad thing? Let's discuss. Hi there. Now, depending on where you are in the world and what broker you're using, you may have heard of some big changes that are going on in the forex market over the next few weeks, certainly if you're in Europe. And it's all to do with what's known as ESMA, E-S-M-A. E-S-M-A stands for the European Securities and Markets Authority. In short, what they're doing is they're changing the amount of leverage that's permitted to be used by retail traders, and in particular in the European forex market. Now, in my short words, this is one of the best things that can happen to our industry. Certainly, if you're an aspiring trader or a rookie trader out there trying to make it in this business. Now, I know many of you are listening from outside of the Eurozone, um, and these direct rules won't apply to you. But you should also stick around for the video, because I think it's important. Wherever you are in the world, these lower leverages are going to be happening all over the place. And it's sooner you get to learn to understand and appreciate that you don't need high leverage then the better. As long as you think about leverage in the same mindset as the European trader, you're halfway there. As we know, the forex market has been a breeding ground for the marketeers over the years, feeding off the gambling mentality. As we all know, gambling is one of the most popular pastimes out there. You only have to look at the huge number of online casinos and sports betting companies that have emerged over the last decade or so. So this gambling mindset uh, that's been so prevalent has now been exploited by parts of the finance industry, mainly by making available insane amounts of leverage to the retail trader. That's basically you and I. Now, leverage, for those that are unfamiliar, is basically a loan of trading, of trading funds that the broker provides you in order for you to trade the markets. And the more money that you're able to borrow, or the leverage that you're able to use, the higher your potential returns are. But as you've guessed it, the higher the potential returns, the bigger for your potential and higher losses. So you get to start to see here now why so many people are attracted to the forex market. Most of us, gambling is a hobby, not a money-making exercise, as the odds are always stacked against us in the house's favour. So this insane leverage is designed to entice the gambler into the markets. I can tell you now, no matter where you are in the world, insane leverage for the rookie trader is very, very dangerous. So this short video, I think, will be a good wake-up call for you as well. I'm going to show you, though, why you don't necessarily need such high leverage to be profitable in the forex market. Also, as I said, bear in mind, if you are in other parts of the world uh, that are not directly affected by ESMA, don't be surprised if it won't be coming to a place near you very soon. It's certainly the trend recently uh, started in Asia where they reduced leverage to 20 to 30 to 1 and now adopted in the States where leverage has been reduced to just 50 to 1. So stick around, there's going to be something in this video for you as well. So first up, what are the changes that ESMA are applying to the European traders? Well, to put it simply, they're bringing down the permitted leverage allowed in Forex in line with the other asset classes, as well as some other key points that we'll also uh, discuss with you now. Firstly, from now on, or I should say from the 1st of August, the maximum leverage applied to major forex pairs is reduced to 30 to 1. That's a massive reduction from some brokers offering 100 to 1, 200 to 1, even 500 to 1. This will basically result in up to seven times the additional margin required to open up a forex position. And this is on each and every currency pair, remember. So if you're a trader that has multiple positions open at one time, this could really hurt you. So maybe it's time to focus on less and master a few, as opposed to spreading your money over all the different currency pairs. A maximum of 20 to 1 leverage on major indices, such as the FTSE, the Dow, S&Ps, the DAX. That's a reduction by 10 times. So 10 times more margin is going to be required to open the same position. And this also applies to minor forex pairs as well. A reduction to just 10 to 1 leverage on commodities and non-major indices. Again, that's 10 times more margin is going to be required. 5 to 1 leverage maximum on individual equities. A leverage of just 2 to 1 on the cryptocurrencies 
which I guess is a reflection of how volatile this trading entity is. And a very bold move on binary options, a complete ban, mainly due to the rapid rise of online scammers in the business and also the fact that retail traders simply don't make money uh, by trading binary options. Margin closeout rule at 50%. So positions will be closed out when the account loses 50% of the margin required. Negative balance protection, meaning you can't lose more money than you have in your trading account. This is really good for the retail rookie trader. A restriction on the incentives offered to trade CFDs. So no more gimmicks and enticements to trade. And finally, a standardized risk warning, including the percentage of losses on CFD and spread betting providers. Um, so basically showing how many of their clients were winners and how many of their clients were losers. And no doubt this will cause quite a few alarm bells, which is why I think these new regulations will be so good for the Forex market. Uh, meaning I hope that people will now wake up and realize that they should be doing things differently if they want to succeed in this business. So can you make money trading FX with just 30 to 1 leverage? Well, the most successful foreign exchange traders in the world on the planet are in Asia, where leverage is only 20 to 1, for example, in Japan. And studies have shown that using less leverage will result in much more profitable trading. It takes away the gambling mentality, and it certainly helps prevent the destruction of trading accounts, which is, quite honestly, the biggest reason why traders end up failing and giving up on the dream. Do you think for a moment that the professional investment banks allow their traders to use 100, 200, 500 to 1 leverage? These investment banks employ high-tech risk management departments at high cost to uh, that employ strict safety procedures to prevent the high use of leverage. Leverage is strictly controlled, mainly since the bearings collapsed. If you remember Nick Leeson when I was back trading on the floor of the futures market. They now use much smaller leverage. Five to one leverage would be considered quite large in an investment bank. So what should be done with these reduced permitted leverages? Well, of course, you can keep switching to another broker that continues to offer the higher leverage. But be careful of this because the global trend is for reduction in leverage and it won't be long before these will have to reduce their leverage as well. So the sooner you get back to trading with lower leverage, the better. You may go to an overseas broker that's unregulated, but be careful of that. They could run away with your money. Today, I want to run with you another approach that I think is the way you should be attacking this. Learn to trade with lower leverage. Albert Einstein once said that the eighth wonder of the world is compound interest. Those that understand it earn it and those that don't pay it. And I don't think there's a truer thing ever said. If you believe my teachings over the last previous videos that I've been talking to you about, you will be in agreement that Forex is not a get rich quick scheme. It takes time and with time can come great things. Let's say you're starting with a $10,000 trading account and you have a target of say 5% a month, quite a large target, but certainly achievable. Now that would equate to $500 a month, not enough to live on. But remember, we are being realistic here. We're not getting rich quick, we're in this for the long haul. 5% a month is about 80% a year if you compound that up. Now that is huge. Over a three year period, that 10,000 would have grown to $58,000. So how can we make 80% return just using 10 to one leverage? That's half what's permitted or a third of what's permitted by the ESMA. Well, think about it. $10,000 account, 10 to one leverage means you're controlling one standard lot. In the case of the Euro dollar, for example, that's $10 a pip. So you need to make just 50 pips a month to make 80% return on investment in a year. And of course, you're gonna have your losing trades as well, but you just need to make 50 pips more on the winners than you do on the losers. And with controlled discipline and correct money management, this is very achievable. Remember, the less risk, the more likely you're gonna to stick to your trading plan. And look, if you increase this leverage to say 20 to one, which is still permitted, that means you may need to make just 25 pips a month to make 50K profit in three years. So think about it this way if you wish. Think about it, three years time, you've been trading, you've done well, you've achieved your target, you've turned 10K into 60K, 
just using 10 to 1 leverage. You proved yourself as a trader. Now, effectively, you've got 60 to 1 leverage, bearing in mind your starting capital, without taking a huge amount of risk. Remember, we all have bad days when we're trading. The difference between using low leverage and high leverage is that a bad day doesn't wipe you out when you're trading low leverage. And also consider the risk to ruin is much higher on high leverage. When trading with small or no leverage, the emotions will be considerably less. And emotions and psychology, as I'm sure you know, are the biggest reasons why traders fail. Let's have a quick look at the whiteboard now. and I want to show you some other numbers. OK, so now I want to talk to you about the relationship to the percentage at risk in relation to the leverage and how that affects your trading. Now, many educators will tell you that you should never risk more than, say, 2% of the value of the account on any one trade. Some will actually say never risk more than, say, 5%. I think that's absolutely bonkers. I think that's excessive risk. Personally, I will only risk normally half percent or a quarter of a percent on my intraday trading on each and every trade. But for the sake of this example on the whiteboard, make the calculations easier, I'm going to use a 1% risk. It makes my life easier when I'm trying to work through the calculations. And I'm going to use a $10,000 account. Now, of course, a lot of people are trading with smaller accounts, but all the numbers are scalable. You just have to move the decimal place either direction, depending on what size of account you are using. But the numbers all equate to the same. So let's assume now you've got a $10,000 account and we're going to be risking 1% risk. 1% of 10,000 means each trade we're going to be risking $100. Now, if we're using a 50 to 1 leverage, 50 times 10,000 is 500,000. That basically means we're going to be using five standard lots. Remember, in Forex, each standard lot represents 100,000 units. So we're now going to be using five standard lots. That basically means we're going to be trading at $50 per pip. Each pip in the euro dollar, for example, standard lot is worth $10. So we are now... I've got two pips before we get stopped out using $50 a pip. Our maximum loss is set at 100. Pretty tight stop. Pretty tight, pretty likely to get stopped out. Now let's assume we're risking the same amount, 1%, 10,000, $100 at risk, but now we're going to use 20 to 1 leverage. 20 times 10,000 is 200,000. 200,000 is two standard lots. Each standard lot, $10 a pip, so we're doing $20 per pip now. We're now allowed a five pip stop before we get stopped out. Still pretty tight, pretty close stuff there. That's using 20 to 1 leverage, which is still less than the ESMA are allowing. Now we're using 1% risk, same dollar, uh, same dollar amount at risk, using 10 to 1 leverage, 10 to 1 leverage, $10 a pip. We're now allowed a 10 pip stop. Slightly better, but still quite close. Now let's assume we're using no leverage at all. 1% at risk, 10,000 on the account, 100 at risk, zero leverage, it's now basically $1 per pip. We can now afford ourselves 100 pips before we get stopped out. Much less likely to get stopped out. It's away from all the noise. And of course, the more times we get stopped out, the more our account depreciates. We want to avoid getting stopped out if we can, really. So by reducing leverage enables you to help not get stopped out as much. Of course, you're not going to make as much, but at the end of the day, we're in this game for the long haul, as I said. Now, of course, a lot of you won't be trading with $10,000. Everything's scalable. Just drop a naught off if you're using an account size of just 1000 Of course, then you'd just be risking $10 per pip. You'll be trading half a lot or 0.2 of a lot, 0.1 of a lot, and so forth. But this won't change. You'll still be using the same distance in stop using these numbers of 1% risk. So this is the important thing here. The leverage, the high leverage, is going to cause you to increase your uh, chances of being stopped out because your stop needs to be closer and tighter if you're conforming to the standard percentage risk on the account, which you should do if you want to grow the account in time. Remember what Einstein said about compound interest. Look, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it made sense to you. I hope you're not getting yet too concerned now about the ESMA regulations. And even indeed, if it's not affecting you, you're in other parts of the world, maybe you should consider trading with lower leverage if you're not at the moment successful. Lower leverage means you're taking less risk in the market. You're much less likely to get emotionally involved in the market and a lot less likely to get the stop outs that are always going to be happening if you're using high risk leverage. 
If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. As always, leave a comment below. I'd like to know how you're finding the leverage working for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And of course, follow us on Instagram. Till the next video, good luck and happy trading.